Even before VE Day itself, victory in Europe was hailed in Moscow's Red Square by the first May Day parade to be held for four years. By the toil and devotion of her people and the genius of Joseph Stalin, the Red Star of Soviet Russia has risen to a great and lasting triumph. On May 9, 2022, Russian tanks and troops rolled through Russian cities and towns, commemorating the 77th anniversary of the country's Victory Day over the Nazis. Also on May 9, 2022, Russian tanks and troops rolled through Ukrainian cities and towns, leaving death and destruction in their wake. President Vladimir Putin showed no discomfort at all in celebrating the patriotic holiday during his country's ongoing invasion of a sovereign neighbor. The timing was, in fact, the point. You are fighting for the motherland, for its future, so that lessons of the World War II are not forgotten, so that there is no place in history for the punitive divisions of Nazis. This delusion of an ongoing Nazi threat is both central to Putin's justification for invading Ukraine and to his conception of modern Russia's role in the world today. The legacy of World War II looms large in Russian consciousness, and as Finland's former prime minister, Alex Stube, explained on my show a few weeks ago, Russian patriotism has long relied on an us versus them mentality. So the narrative in Russian history has always been that the rest of the world is out to get us. So that the Russia, the biggest country in the world geographically, is somehow surrounded by enemies. But the thing about prophecies is they can become self-fulfilling. NATO is about to become bigger with Stubbs, Finland and Sweden entering the fold. And the West's response has been unprecedented in its swiftness and scope, with billions of dollars in weaponry flowing into Ukraine and billions of dollars in sanctions being levied against Russia. And with it, the rhetoric from key Western leaders has gone beyond simply advocating that Russia withdraw troops from Ukraine. Uh, we want to see Russia uh, uh, weakened. The war in Ukraine is our war. I have so much admiration for our brave Ukrainian friends fighting against this. They are fighting our war. Russian state media is in overdrive, pushing the idea that the country is under attack by the West, calling for strikes on NATO countries and even glorifying nuclear annihilation. Here's the danger of the West's shift in policy. The goal cannot and should not be the destruction of Russia's military, because that's not going to happen without risking world war. Despite its many failures in Ukraine, Russia remains a nuclear superpower with a military 10 times greater than Ukraine's and all sorts of advanced military capabilities to destabilize not just Ukraine, but NATO countries.